boys and girls, welcome to Kids Connection! My name is Johnny, I am your host for the program today, and this is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. <sighs> Mr. Zorik is not available today, so he asked me to host the program one more time. <sighs> and I am so happy! I am so happy to see you, and I'm so happy because today is Sabbath, and I'm so happy because today we are going to have a special program, and I am going to be uh, be making baking a cake right here in Kids Connection program, so I get to share that with you guys, okay? So stick around, and let's get another program started. But to get our program started today, we're going to be talking about something very important. But before that, let's get our song of the day. I have decided to follow Jesus. Sing with us. song did you like it good 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 well i invite you to bow your head so we can talk to jesus now dear jesus thank you so much for this beautiful sabbath we ask that you be with us as we worship your name today be with all the boys and girls in jesus name we pray amen well kids welcome to kids connection i am johnny your host for today and let me tell you a secret. I want to buy a boat. Don't tell anybody. Yes, I want to buy a boat. A boat. Yes, a boat. You know why? Well, I want to buy a boat so I can do what these missionaries are doing all the way in the Amazon River in Brazil. Let's watch our missionary story where they have a church on the boat. The 
Amazon River is a source of food and income for many. As you travel along the river, you can see many communities along the banks. Here you will find one quarter of our planet's fresh water supply. That's why boats are necessary for transportation. There are entire communities with either no knowledge of the Bible or no churches. Adventist here found a fitting way to reach more than 10,000 communities. Thanks to your past contributions to the 13th Sabbath offering, the Floating Church was built. This custom boat is a church that carries the pastor's family. It often works alongside the Adra Luzero boats to provide health care and hope to people. The main goal behind the Floating Church project is to reach places we typically find hard to visit. The Floating Church offers an infrastructure for a pastor or Bible worker, a captain, and others to live aboard. There's also an auditorium where people from the community can come to listen to the Word of God. The Floating Church has an auditorium that seats 120 people. It's a comfortable space for people to come and learn about God. I know what difficulties they face and how hard it is for the gospel message to reach the distant communities along the Amazon River. This touched me in a special way. I was moved by the prospect of this project. It was encouraging to imagine how far this boat could go to reach the Riverside families. This boat also has onboard apartments for the crew. Reno Guerra is both the pastor and the captain of the boat. He and his wife, Natalia, accepted God's call to bring hope and healing to the region. As soon as the boat docks, it's received with a lot of joy. People are happy to see the floating church because it is a beautiful and unique boat. Pastor Reno sounds the horn to catch the attention of the people who come curiously to look. So the pastor invites the people to a church program. He enters a community where the work already has begun and calls the people to come inside the floating church. The boat is usually docked for 60 days as they talk about family, health, and community well-being. In the first year of service, two new churches were established through the floating church. This past June, the Gutierrez Church opened as a result of the missionary project. This is the first daughter church plant of the Floating Church Project. The church that floats is the mother of all the traditional church structures that are built along the banks of the Amazon River. Indeed, miracles are happening along the Amazon. We noticed that this project changes what people think about God and about the Adventist Church. There is change in their society. People become calmer, happier, more content and united. The church helps the community to realize how they can work together as one body to develop social projects for themselves. I believe many souls will be reached through this boat. This boat can reach places where even radio signals don't travel to reach hearts. We pray that this will be managed and used well for the gospel to reach the farthest places in the Amazon. We have the opportunity to navigate rivers and oceans as part of our mission to reach unreached people groups. Please pray for the floating church and the many missionaries involved in flooding the Amazon with hope. And thank you for supporting projects like these through the 13th Sabbath offering. Okay, okay, well, maybe not buying a boat, but one way that I can help is with my offerings. Don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link so they can too help the missionaries with the offerings. Thank you for your support. Kids, today I am excited to host the program because I want to show you that I can bake a cake. Do you guys 
help mom and dad bake and cake sometimes? Is it fun? Yes, I know it is. So let me get a couple of ingredients and I'm gonna bake a cake right here in Kids Connection. Hold on. First, first, I'm gonna bring the flowers here. Hold on, let me get the eggs. I gotta be careful. Here comes the eggs. Perfect, perfect. Well, let's see what else. Uh, yes, yes, I am missing the cake mix. Hold on. Here it is, the box with the instructions. So now all I have to do is follow the instructions. Let me get a bowl. Okay, so here is a bowl. Let's go ahead and get it started. Let me bring the bowl close to the table here. Here we go, here we go. Okay, so now it tells me that I need to get some flour. So here is the flour. Let me, let me get some. too much flour but it's okay because I like to make my own recipe okay so now it tells me that I need two eggs well I think two eggs is too much so I'm going to go and put one egg Was I supposed to crack the egg first? Well, it doesn't say here in the instructions to crack the egg. So, I guess not. Just the egg. Uh, let's see. Put butter. I, I don't have butter. Well, I guess it's okay for me to bake this cake without butter. Okay, so now let me, let me get my bowl, mixing bowl. Okay, so now the instructor says, go ahead and beat for two minutes. Beat. Okay, let's beat this thing. I wonder why it tells me to beat it. Let's see, yeah, beat for two minutes. So this is the best I can do. Beating, 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 beating. Beating, beating, oh yes. Okay. So, hmm, that's strange. It doesn't look like a cake, but, oh well. I, I, I didn't follow all the instructions as it said on the box, but let's, let's see what happens. So, let's see. After beating for two minutes, Take it to the oven. Okay, kids. Wait. 
It's telling me to put chocolate inside. But I don't have chocolate. Well, I guess I'm going to make a chocolate cake without a chocolate and without butter because I don't have it. Take it to the oven. Let's see what happens. Oh, by the way, kids, look at my cake. Beautiful. Uh, I think it's going to be a little crunchy because of the egg. But it's okay. I'll be right back. Uh, kids, I got bad news. My chocolate cake without chocolate and without butter did not turn out so good. No! Why, why, why? Why did my chocolate look like that? After all this hard work, my chocolate cake without chocolate looks like this. I can't believe it! Why do you think my chocolate cake without chocolate didn't turn out good? Well, I, I follow somewhat the instructions in the box. I put the, some of the ingredients inside the bowl and I beat it for two minutes, then I took it to the oven. That, well, okay, I, okay, I, okay. I guess it, it's not telling, I, I guess it's not telling me to do just that. Oh, there are other things that I didn't do. I guess I didn't follow all the instructions. Do you think it's good to follow instructions? Why do we follow instructions to bake a cake? Do you follow instructions when baking a cake with mom and dad? It is important. Well, I guess I learned my lesson today and I have to follow instructions to make sure the cake is going to turn out just right. In today's story, in our lesson, we are going to learn about some instructions given to some people and how important it was for them to follow those instructions. Boys and girls, before we get to our story, let's sing our song of the day one more time.
because I have decided to follow Jesus. Following the instructions in the Bible is to follow Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the instructions that you give us in your Bible. I pray that all the boys and girls follow these instructions because you know what's best for us. Keep us safe. Mom, Dad, and all the boys and girls, help us to learn more about you in our lesson today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our Kids Connection program, kids. Next week, Mr. Zorik is going to be here and he's going to lead the Kids Connection program. But I have some announcements to make. The first one is that today, our worship service in our church is going to be by Zoom. Yes, by Zoom. Pastor James, Pastor Ben, Pastor Linda, and Pastor Lauren, they are all going to be live on Zoom. And they're going to talk to people. And everyone is going to participate. Mom, dad, grandpas, grandmas, aunts, uncles, everybody. Now, something very special, boys and girls. I am going to be there too. Yes. Johnny is going to participate in our program today. You are going to have a special part there too. So ask mom and dad that you want to meet Johnny in our worship service Zoom today. Just go to graceunconditional.com online worship service and click on the Zoom link at 11 o'clock so we can be a part of our worship service together and you will have a chance to talk to me live in our zoom worship today at 11 o'clock <sighs> i hope to see you in zoom okay now our friend kid is going to visit some kids this afternoon mr zorik is going to take him and make a couple of stops today. We will show you some of the clips next week of his visit to some kids this afternoon. Okay, so come back next week and watch kids visit some kids. Okay? Do you like happy birthday parties? I love happy birthday parties. And I love when people, when people sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you! Yes, I love birthdays. And this week, we have a special birthday celebration. Miss Teresa, the Tiny Tots teacher, is having a birthday this week. Don't forget to give her a call and wish her a happy birthday. And if you are having a birthday, send us an email and let us know so we can to wish you a happy birthday. VD Kids Connection at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you so much for participating in our Kids Connection. And I will see you guys some other time. Tune in again next week for another Kids Connection program with Mr. Zori. Until then, God bless you all. Bye bye. I'll see you kids at 11 o'clock worship on Zoom. Bye bye. I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi kids, how are you? Good morning. I'm glad that you're joining us. Welcome to our Sabbath School program. We're here because we want to spend the time with you and we want to learn about God. So we're very happy that you're here with us. Why don't we start with a word of prayer? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful this morning because you're giving us a new opportunity to live. Thank you, God, because you fill our hearts with joy. Sometimes we feel sad, sometimes we feel worried, but you are always in our lives helping us and knowing that you are by our sides just makes us feel much better. Please give a big, big hug to every kid that is listening to us today. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we're here to learn a new lesson. Remember that some lessons ago we were talking about Thessalonian? That was a very long word, but it was the name of the city. And remember that this city was a very important city. A lot of um, people would go through that city, they would buy and sell, a lot of trading was going on, so a lot of money was in that area. And Paul started a little bit of a ministry there. He started a small group, but then the people of Thessalonians thought that he was trying to bring another uh, king or another ruler, and they said, we want you out. They go out of the city and they run out because they were uh, being persecuted. But Paul, after some time, says, you know what? Uh, why don't we go back and we see how the church that started is doing? So can you open up your Bibles? And this starts in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And we're just going to read the first verse so you know what's going on. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of Thessalonians, in God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. Thanksgiving for the Thessalonians' faith. So Timothy was the youngest of all. So Paul my must have told him, you know, Timothy, you're very young. So why don't you go to Thessalonians and make sure that everything's running well. Um, so Timothy goes on his own. And when he gets there, he has a very special message for them. In a while, we're going to see what's part of the message that he needed to deliver. But you know, I want to show you something before we begin. Have you ever seen Lego sets? I'm sure some of you have. And look at this. I have this one that it's already assembled. And it's really nice. It has some wheels and you know, it's like a little car, motorcycle. And you know, why don't we try to build one of them? So I have a little box here that has the pieces that we need to build and I also have the booklet that will show me the instructions right I'm sure you've seen some of this so in this booklet you just need to follow instructions and it seems really easy because you just have to follow the steps so let's see hmm. okay I can look piece number one let me see Piece number one looks like this. Mm, but you know what? I can't find quite the same, so I'm gonna use this one. Uh, I think this one will work. So let's see. Uh, let's look for the other one. The other one, it says that it's supposed to be a gray one. But I don't have that shape. But you know, I don't think it matters. I think if we put this two together, how could I put them together? I think I can put this ones together. How do they assemble? Okay. I've never done any of these, so I didn't grow up with Legos, so. <laughs> okay, so, okay, they fit. Look at this, they, they fit. So I think this one will work. Oh, look at this, it has a tire, but it says to put the tire later on. I'm not sure, do you think we should put the tire now? Probably it's not gonna fit. Um, what can I do? Let me see. I want to build a car, but I only have this once. And um, what can I do? Oh, you know what? This is really hard. I, I was just able to do this. I was just able to do this. I don't know why. I'm kind of disappointed. I don't know how to do this. You know what? What do you think the problem is? I think the problem is that I'm not following the instructions. If you follow the instructions, then you would be able, so why don't I read the whole instructions first, make sure that I have all the pieces, and once I make sure that I have all the pieces, then I'll be able, oh, look at that. It says that the wheels go all the way to the end. And I was trying to put them. So here are all the pieces I'm going to be needing. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to select all the pieces that I need. And then I can go back once I understand how it works, then I can go back and start building it one by one. 
it's gonna take a lot of time but I'm sure that if I follow the directions it's going it's gonna be able to work and I'm gonna be able to do another one of these you know the Bible is full of instructions just as the Lego sets sometimes we try to jump all the way to the end and we say you know what skip all the instructions I don't want to hear uh, too much explanations because Uxval here was really eager to let me know how to do the Lego because he's already done it. So he was telling me, mom, I can help you. I can help you. And you know what? The Bible is the same thing. We need to help each other because guess what? I can study the Bible today and I can see the instructions and then someone else is missing a piece of the instructions and I can tell them, oh, you know what? you're missing this verse of the Bible. If you put this verse and this verse, then it makes sense. If you put the verses, love God with all your heart, and then you, you find the verse that says, love your enemies, how can they match each other? Because we cannot hate someone if we love God with all our hearts because God is love. I know it's really hard for humans to do, but it's something that we need to pray about and we need to ask God for his guidance. So Paul was giving him a lot of these things to Timothy. So I want you to open up your Bibles and go to uh, 1 Thessalonians. Now we're going to jump to chapter 2. And in chapter 2, we continue hearing some of those messages. And... I'm gonna want I, I'm gonna ask you to look on verse 12 it says encouraging comforting and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory who are we going to be encouraging who are we going to be comforting and who is it saying urging them to live a life worthy of God who do you think they're talking about what does it mean to encourage someone do we know have you ever been part of a baseball team or any kind of sports and that someone is batting and everyone else is cheering and saying yes you can do it you can do it come on hit a home run and even though there's not a home run as soon as you that player hits the ball, everyone starts cheering and saying, go, 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 run, run, run. And everyone gets excited for that player. You know, in church is the same thing. Sometimes people need to pray for us and we're the ones suffering and everyone is the one saying, you know what, continue your path. We're praying with you. God is with us. Keep on doing. And sometimes we are the ones encouraging each other. You know, we're part of a big family. So if one member of the family suffers, everyone suffers. If one person is happy, everyone rejoices with that person because we're part of a team. And Paul wants to give that message to Thessalonians. Probably they were going through some trials. Probably they were, they were having difficulties in the church. And Paul was saying, you know what? Don't worry. You are a group so that you can support each other, so that you can encourage each other, and you can live lives worthy of God. This morning, I want to encourage you to live a life full of joy and encouragement to others. How we live our lives, our thoughts, our words are going to determine if our lives are praising God. Our lives are encouraging others. Our lives are comforting others. These times we cannot be around people a lot, but we can pray. Can you think about someone that would require prayer this morning? Probably a family member, probably a friend you have not seen in a while. You know, prayers are a very special way of helping others because they don't require any specific message. We just need to pray and ask God, please help this person. I haven't seen that person in a while, but I hope that person is well. I hope that person has food in his table. I hope that person is keeping his faith alive. That is why we're family. And you know, kids, 
This morning, I want to ask you to find someone you can pray about. I'm going to be praying about each one of you. I remember your names, and I know that you have been watching us. So please pray this week. Encourage us this, hour, this, this time, and I'll see you back next week with another lesson. I want to have a word of prayer with you. Our Father in heaven, thank you very much. Thank you, God, because you are always by our sides. Help, help us so that we can encourage others. Help us so that we can love others and we can support our big family church members. Thank you very much for all that you do for us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.